I think we're live. Hello, hello. I think we are. Yeah. That's what the thing says at the top. So, okay, cool. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, uh, uh, to our LinkedIn Live. I'm Lauren Sargent. I'm a co founder at Stories Inc. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Bern Bernadette Van Giesen for the very first time on a, a webinar, LinkedIn Live. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Congrats. Thank you for those of you. I your new last name. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, I promise I will not do this every time. But uh, for those of you who are who do come to these, you know me as Bernadette Lonnie. Um, three weeks ago, I got married. Yay. Um, and I am changing my last name. So my last name is now Van Giesen. And here I am. Same me, just different last name. Premiering your last name, LinkedIn Live. <laughs> uh, you heard it first. Uh, congrats to you. We are so thrilled for you. And uh, where are you? I know you've been traveling the world. Where are you today? Yes. So my husband, Brian, and I did a two-week honeymoon in Italy, and we decided to take advantage of this remote work world and extend a little bit. So um, we are currently in Dublin. So we are at a work in Dublin, which is wonderful. Got some great uh, flowers and plants behind me, which is great. So it's good. It's been fun. Excellent. Wonderful. Um, okay. So happy Thursday, everyone out there. Uh, before we get into our topic today, I just wanted to do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, for those of you who are new here, Stories Inc. is a content agency that specializes in employee storytelling. And we really love to host these quick ash actionable learning sessions every other Thursday here on LinkedIn to discuss um, timely employee storytelling topics. So our goal here really is to share our knowledge and expertise that we're constantly gaining from partnering with um, our clients leading employer brand, corporate comms, marketing, talent acquisition, all of all of the things. Um, and so taking what we learned from those projects and sharing them with all of you to hopefully make us all better at what we do. Um, so one of our colleagues will be sharing in the chat. So resources, tips, things that we're talking about, she'll be linking out to them. So hopefully you can follow along both during the session and after the fact. Um, and we also love when people take part in the chat. So please, if you're working on any of these things, like share, share the stories that you love, share things that you're working on. We really want um, to create a community here on LinkedIn. So Lauren, did I forget anything? Um, no, you covered it. I think, um, hi, and thank you to Hannah, our uh, colleague who's sharing all the links. Appreciate you always, and especially for doing that work today. And um, <laughs> And also, you know, we can't, we love to interact, but just the way LinkedIn Live is set up, we can't actually see your comments. Hannah's going to send some questions our way through Slack that hopefully we will see and can address. But if for some reason we don't get to a question that you have that you're asking us, we'll follow up after the fact. Um, you can always reach out to us on LinkedIn or we can, we'll follow up with you because we'll see the chat. We'll come back and after the fact and talk to everybody. Um, but that's it. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's the housekeeping stuff, I think. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Cool. Okay. So let's get into our topic today. Lauren, what are we talking about? We're talking about employee storytelling for communications and marketing leaders. It's a good one. I like it. Me too. Yeah, I think so too. And uh, I hope so. <laughs> and uh, we've been creating employee storytelling content for this particular audience, which is, you know, marketing and communications um, for the last few years. Um, or so, but and a lot of our new customers do come from traditional comms and marketing. Um, but I don't think we've ever done a LinkedIn Live about it. We've done some internal comms, um, but we just thought it would be a good topic um, for how we're working with this audience. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we've, we've talked about internal comms. We've talked about organizational storytelling, both of which overlap a lot with communications. And I, I think Hannah will be sharing links to those LinkedIn Lives in the comments if you want to take a deeper dive into those topics. Um, but today we are going to be talking about traditional corporate communications and marketing. So Lauren, what, how do comms leaders approach employee storytelling differently from some of these other stakeholder groups that we also partner with? Yes, there are some ways that, that um, they do approach it differently from like a, you know, a TA leader that we would work with. Um, although a lot of, you know, the fundamentals are the same employee stories and, uh, you know, and engaging content is, you know, that's important and you know no matter no matter who we're working with but the difference is that's who we're here to talk about the difference is um are with working with cor corporate um comms and marketing are really three different things that i see so the first is that you know uh, communications leaders are interested in using employee stories more broadly so it's not just about the candidate audience um it's about engaging employees 
customers, future customers, alumni, and more. Um, and comms layers sometimes have, you know, they have all those audiences to answer to, and they usually do take an organizational storytelling approach, which we'll dig into um, later, which is great. You know, I'm, I'm glad that that's, that that's how they view employee stories. Um, the second would be, you know, comms leaders prioritize on going in refreshed content. We don't create a lot of evergreen content for comms leaders like we do for TA leaders. So we're trying to stretch that content sometimes with TA. Um, where comms leaders really value having a lot of new content that addresses what's happening now. So they put a lot of priority on the timeliness of the content and the messaging. Um, and you know, we all know that culture evolves um, and really comms leaders are less interested in the content that's meant to stay static, although they see its value too. Um, we just do a lot of, you know, a lot of content libraries, a lot of ongoing content on demand, um, which we'll talk about later too. Um, and thirdly, you know, for that reason, we found that comms leaders take a more flexible approach to content planning. Most of our engagements where comms leaders are our contact are retainer agreements. Um, and it could be just because they're used to working with agencies in that way. Um, but for us, it means that, you know, we have a plan for deliverables throughout the year that are very clear, the things they know for sure that we need to be talking about using employee stories. Um, but then we have a lot of space in the spend for undefined deliverables because we know they'll come up um, that are, and they're harder to plan for. Um, so a lot of that, we create content on demand. Um, we'll show an example of a plan later so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and how we execute on that, on the, the plan and the unplanned as part of a plan, 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 plan. Um, and, <laughs> and basically, you know, for, the, for that, for those types of uh, engagements, we do need to have a, a pretty strong understanding of our employee story inventory so we can pull content as needed. Um, so I'd say those are the differences. Yes, no, it's definitely, thanks for laying that out. It's a very unique perspective. Um, and as always, we're going to be sharing examples throughout as we dive in each of these ideas. Um, okay, so the first one that you mentioned is that comms leaders use employee stories more broadly. So I know a lot of times we refer to this as organizational storytelling, and we have a really big ebook that we'll be sharing and uh, gating in the content on the um, chat here. But for the sake of today, can you remind us what organizational storytelling is and what it means for comms leaders? Yes, um, and I'm glad that we're. I'm giving that ebook. Love that ebook. Um, organizational storytelling, uh, the way we define it is it surfaces important cultural moments and corporate decisions that impact people. And then, you know, we use employee stories to engage the audiences that are interested in your culture. So um, the output of that process is media that both tells your overarching story and also showcases important moments that bring your culture to life. Um, so, oh, good. This is a good, um, this is from the book and this is a good uh, representation. Um, so you'll see corporate comms is in the middle and they serve all these different internal audiences who have audiences of their, of their own. So when you take an organizational approach, you're really working with all the internal functions who have an audience that they need to engage. And, you know, comms leaders are tuned into this because they're often supporting those functional leaders or they're responsible for those audiences themselves. Um, and so here's, you know, kind of just a quick look at some of those internal functions that comms and marketing support. Definitely can see how they would have more of kind of a broad lens as they think about content, because it's like you have to be able to see all of these different functions and these different audiences, which is why I like to think of the inside of a comms brain looking something like this, which is <laughs> another, another really great graphic of ours. Uh, Lord, you could tell us about this one, but just like how many different things that you can talk about with employee stories. Yes. I mean, yeah, I love this one too. And I know we've had this for a while, but it's still one of my favorites. And, you know, lots of the employee story content we create has so many different uses and can be repurposed for different internal groups and audiences. And so comms leaders love this just because it's um, a smart way to <laughs> create and reuse content um, that matters to multiple audiences. Um, and, you know, of course, employee stories are used to, to um, prove all kinds of points and illustrate all kinds of culture concepts. Yes, so I have a third graphic here, but just to kind of pull it together, that's like high level, how comms think about content broadly, but then what does that actually kind of look like logistically when it comes to creating the content? Yes, this, um, hope, I think this does pull it all together, which is, you know, this is how we help comms and marketing leaders build an employee story practice. So on one side, 
The left side is employee storytellers. So we interview employees from all of the organization to uncover great stories about what the company's done to improve their lives. Um, and then, you know, after we get all those great stories, we in the middle is where we create that content. Um, and then on the right side is how it's used. So comms and marketing leaders use the content to help their company build connections with all their different audiences and to support all those different internal functions. So there's lots of uses and that's kind of just how it works at, at a, you know, practical level. And I think- yeah, Absolutely. And then, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, I'm pretty sure you have an example. <laughs> that's what we do is we try to ground everything. Every time we get a little bit too wide, we're like, let's show the actual example. So I was about to tee up. I'm pretty sure we have an example. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Yes, we do have an example. Um, and this one is from Accenture Federal Services, so a leading IT service management company. And we worked with their marketing and comms uh, team there to really highlight a really specific business unit in their group, which is their applied intelligence lab. And they focus on really complex problems. So we are going to share a video from one of their team members there. I actually went to school and studied and prepared my entire life to be an academic. And then six months into the job, I decided I did not want to do that anymore. Accenture made a very big impact uh, in my career search because of the possibilities um, of doing research and because of the emphasis on the scientific model and the process that was being done around the, the data science path. They really distinguish themselves as being fundamentally rooted on the academic principles that I was already working through. So I remember when I first uh, joined, we were all talking about a storm that was coming through. And I shared my life experience of my home being destroyed by a hurricane when I was young uh, in Honduras. And we started discussing this being a big issue. And especially in developing countries where there's very little communication of how do you escape? Like we were driving, trying to get away. And I was like, you know, 15 years old and it was nerve wracking. And then we started brainstorming. And as an additional activity to what our day-to-day -day work was, we came up with an algorithm that could redirect people in instances of natural disasters by using computer vision and help people actually evacuate. And this idea was something that we pitched and we got funding for to develop fully. We wrote an academic paper, we published it, and then we built a patent around it. And Accenture sponsored this patent. So this is the number one, the first patent for the Discovery Lab. And it started out of a conversation around the coffee machine of this storm is coming, what do we do? And, and that's what I look forward to today, still, of how do we talk to each other about things that matter to us that then end up at somehow being impactful to other people. Oh, such a good video. Yeah, I love the Vika story. It's great. Yes, um, yeah, so the Vika story there. So kind of looking at that broad lens that communications has, this story really is something that can be used across a lot of different stakeholder groups, right? So it's like for marketing, public relations, customer facing, it shows how um, this intelligence lab is really able to solve real world problems that really matter to human beings and affect lives. Um, and then when you look internally, so internal comms and other people that are speaking to employees, it reinforces that collaboration and that teamwork piece that's really important to their culture and then can turn that externally to candidates too. So like employer brand, talent acquisition, recruit marketing, that story could also really serve their purposes. So a lot of that is like really wrapped up into one video that can be used almost probably half of that flywheel audience group there, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I love the sales implications here, too, because it's talking about all the great work that the Applied Intelligence Lab is doing, the innovative things and how they're solving problems. And they're part of a service offering called Federal Applied Intelligence Services at Accenture Federal. And um, so this video would actually be very relevant and almost educational to current and prospective AFS government customers. Um, we created um, a suite of content with um, the comms leader, internal comms, talent marketing, 
And it's really cool because we just want to do a quick shout out also to Cassie Hart, who's a former Stories Inc. intern, who happens to also be part of the um, Federal Applied Intelligence Services marketing team. So hi, Cassie. Um, and thanks to the team for allowing us, um, and, and Vivica as well, for allowing us to share that example. Yes, absolutely. Um, cool. Okay, so now that we've talked about how comms takes that broad approach to employee storytelling, the next one that you had talked about was the need to be timely, relevant, ongoing, creating stuff that's relevant right now. Um, so I know the first thing that comes to mind to me is a lot of those kind of holidays throughout the year. So we just celebrated Black History Month in February. Right now, we are currently celebrating Women's History Month here in March. Um, is this kind of some of the things that you're talking about when you mean that timely, relevant content? Oh, definitely. Um, and that's the type of um, timeliness that you can plan for, because you know when it's going to happen throughout the year. And, you know, communications does plan for the plan for um, for those types of things. They are on the hook for coming up with all kinds of interesting ways to celebrate and commemorate occasions, um, both internally and externally. So they actually have a lot to think about um, as it relates to those holidays. And, you know, we create a lot of content for Women's History Month, some of which we'll show today. Um, and, uh, you know, we, I think we have a good example as well of a planned holiday content, um, employee story piece that yes. we create. Yep. Oh, we do. Yep. So this <laughs> next video that we're going to share here is from the life sciences company LabCorp. And we partnered with them to create a year of celebratory holidays in advance. So they knew that they wanted to share this kind of stuff internally and ex externally. So creating the stories in advance that they're going to be able to share at timely moments throughout the year. So this story is about uh, was created for Women's History Month. I've never felt as though I can't do something because I'm a woman at LabCorp. I see women in leadership around me all the time. I have been nominated for the Healthcare Business Women's Association Award under the category of Rising Star. Very elated to know that I was nominated for this award by my managers and leadership and by people whom I look up to. I was one of the panelists of the Young Woman Leadership uh, in our China Women Leadership Forum. And uh, I was invited to share my personal experience together with another four women leader. I've seen um, LabCorp really try to focus on, hey, we're, we're looking to elevate the women who work here. We want to hear their voices and we want to hear their opinions. And, and I have been fortunate enough to participate in some of those sessions. I've been so impressed. We'll play the whole video, but um, we'll link to the whole thing in the comments if you want to finish it. But uh, a really great example, not only as it celebrates women, but I really like that they highlighted people from so many different places around the globe that I think when you want to show, you know, that message globally, um, it's just so important to have the storytellers that represent that too. So um, I really like that video. And then that entire project that that was the Women's History Month example, but they also did this for Hispanic Heritage Month, Black History Month, Global Disability Awareness Month, like really just talking about a lot of DEI and cultural topics that were so important and that they were able to plan for that in advance. So um, I think we're going to ungate that ebook, that case study in the comments too, but that is just like a really good example of exactly what you're saying of making a plan to be timely <laughs> as best as best as you can do. Things are changing all the time. <laughs> um, so that's planning to be timely, but what about when things inevitably don't go according to plan? So how do you see comms leaders kind of approaching the unplanned? Yes. I mean, in the best cases, we have a plan, but part of the plan has to be that, like, you don't have a plan. We <laughs> 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 need a lot of space for things that pop up um, that impact a company and culture in real time. Um, especially again, like the the emphasis on being timely. Um, so every day, you know, we're uncovering employee stories that are and aren't part of the plan um, because, you know, what we're after as an organization, full stop, is great employee stories. Um, and so we always get more than we need, more than the topic at hand, as long as it's, you know, um, great content about what it's like to work somewhere in an employee story. Um, and so, you know, comms and marketing leaders love this because they also are storytellers and they want the flexibility to go for the good story um, even if it's not part of the plan. So here's um, an example of a story that we uncovered about an employee experience that we really liked that wasn't actually part of the um, scope, um, but because our clients were flexible and um, 
you know, this is something that we, we created kind of from cutting room floor um, footage that we really liked. Yes, here we go. The best part of working for Colgate is the fact that a little girl had a dream. I was able to make my parents' dream come true and make them super proud. Colgate has been a big part of my life growing up because Latinos were very committed and very faithful to Colgate. Growing up, we only used Colgate in the home. I have a picture of when I was eight months sitting next to a Colgate toothpaste and being able to say today that I work for this company 15 years makes me very proud to represent the company that I work for. That first phone call when I was interviewed and I shared with my parents, it was big because there were difficulties growing up, there were challenges, but they were also very motivating to be where I'm at today. It makes them super proud to see the girls shine bright and grow every day and become the woman that I am today in the organization that I work for. I'm very proud of being a Colgate employee. Oh, that one like always warms my heart so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm so glad that that, like when you think about that, that was something that was not originally planned for and it was on the cutting room floor. It didn't need to be made into a video, but I'm so glad that it did because it's like that is something that just, it really aligns with the message that Colgate wants to put out there to a lot of their different audiences. And so when you see an opportunity like that, being able to pivot and then get it out there um, is just, is just wonderful. And I think really indicative of the team there that they made that happen. Yeah. And I mean, it reinforces the power that Colgate has as a brand. Um, you know, they grew up with Colgate. It's Colgate's an important and impressive brand for her family. Um, so I think there's some in addition to her experience, which I loved. And I love that she equated her success with her family's success. It's really stuck with me. But there's a lot of kind of uh, like brand value, too, of just emphasizing the message that we're a trusted household brand. So, yeah, I really, I really uh, like that story too. And we also used it for yep. um, Women's History Month. So I just wanted to shout out and say thank you for to Jeanette and the Colgate team for allowing us to use it here and for Women's History Month. So thank you. Yeah. Well, and that's an example of kind of the repurposing too, that it's like marketing yeah. for like brand aspects and then being able to share it in a timely way around women's history too. It's awesome. Yep. Um, okay. So that was an unplanned story that we uncovered and then we're able to then use in a thoughtful way. What happens when something unplanned comes up and you need to create content. So that's like a different type of unplanned comms activity. So can you kind of talk us through what you're seeing there? Yeah, I mean, when uh, we kind of have to hop to it, when organizations need to react to something from the outside world that impacts their company or culture. And sometimes, you know, it's it, it can be looking back of what we have, but sometimes it's creating something entirely new quickly. And, you know, sometimes it's good news. Um, hey, we want a huge project. Hey, we bought this company and, um, you know, sometimes it's reacting to your org in the news or something that's happening in the world that impacts your company or that your company would have a perspective on. So there's those things that happen you just can't predict. Yeah, totally. And I think just the thinking about the context of the last three years too, like, of course, one, the big project, the big contract, we are acquiring this new company. But then also when you think about the shift to remote work, having to react to the pandemic and health concerns, um, times where people really need information and comms is responsible to getting um, relevant, timely information that people need. So having to act quickly on, let's say, varying amounts of lead time. So sometimes, sometimes you know, and sometimes you don't. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you know, usually, so I'll just say something else in addition to like the thing that you can't predict, you know, usually there are some things that that are upcoming that our comms leaders absolutely do know about big strategic initiatives, but the timing of the announcement might be in flux, which requires flexibility. Um, you know, so for example, we worked with one of our clients, um, they were rolling out a mental health program to support their front -like workers. And we kind of helped them roll out the, pro the program with employee stories. And it was a really, you know, fast moving initiative, but something that they had enough lead time to create. We just didn't know exactly when it would, happen. And, you know, sometimes corporate leaders know in advance and sometimes things happen on the fly, but the, the point is to be ready. The point is, is that, you know, that's one thing that's, that's a diff that um, is slightly different from, you know, the urgency is slightly different. Mm -hmm. Totally. And I think that kind of leads us into the last thing that you talked about at the top of the session is why retainers work really well for comms, because they do kind of allow for that content creation on the fly. Um, so here at Stories, we can plan 
for that employee story content that the team needs. So we got the holidays, DI stuff, big initiatives that you know are coming that you can plan for. Um, but there is so much that comes up over the course of a quarter and over the course of a year that the retainer does kind of work for that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> yes. Um, awesome. So I have a slide that I can share here, but can you kind of just like talk a little bit more about that idea and how someone would even go about structuring a retainer relationship? Yeah. This is whether it's with us, not with us, yourself, whatever. The whole point is to <laughs> is to illustrate the the plan that has both concrete objectives and leave some space for things that um, that may happen um, quarter to quarter. So um, this is just a sample you know, retainer plan. So we start with determining about how many employees we should interview and where. And in this case, you know, we'll interview employees at the U.S. headquarters, those working in a production facility, and then some employees working remotely at home. But we've decided, OK, we're going to interview 40 people in a, in a year's time. Um, and, you know, then you know we list the content parties for the year, so that's in the plan. So here, um, the, this particular um, thing that we scoped this with a with a potential um, client was, um, they talked about the the channels that they absolutely need content for. They're getting a lot of traction on LinkedIn. We're going to keep d going with what works, but we also need to build out our Instagram uh, channels as well. Um, and so we have that listed, knowing that like that's that is not. Um, specific in terms of the content that's going to be there, but like, okay, this is what, you know, we're, we're going to do. Um, and then you'll, you'll see, um, you know, some, some things that are specific. So for example, with this company, they had a DEI summit and the employees surveyed said that they wish that there were more employee experiences to illustrate some of the concepts and that they wish they knew more about what each session was going to be about. So part of this plan includes an internal campaign that uses short employee stories in advance of the summit and to show that content during it. Um, the communication teams also wanted to, you know, as I mentioned, keep some momentum around LinkedIn, um, but they also wanted to create a series about real career paths from employees who've been able to have great careers moving up and around the company. So that would be used primarily on LinkedIn, maybe some on Instagram, but then also internally and externally too. So that's just kind of quickly how we structure things. And we kind of have the other category of like, and we're going to have photos and we have this blog series that we have in mind, all based on employee stories and content that we collect. No, I oh, think I it's a really say, good. There's something else I forgot. Sorry, didn't mean to talk over you. Yeah. I just forgot. No, 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 no. Oh, good. Which is part of, part of the reason that it makes sense to do this also is um, that we have quarterly reviews just to make sure that things that we're, that we're creating um, on an on ongoing basis are working. So we're taking that time to see what can we tweak so that it performs better um, or what can we do more of that's like, you know, a hit in terms of engaging content or um, you know, a content style that's really, um, that's really engaging the audience as it's intended. No, totally. And I just was going to reemphasize what you said. I feel like this kind of hits on a lot of the things that we've talked about today, that it's like that DEI summit, that's something that they know is going to happen. It's really important. They're strategizing, they're planning for, but then LinkedIn building on Instagram, that's something that you're going to iterate over time and say like, what's working? We need more of this type of video and then kind of using those employee interviews throughout the year to pivot and be able to respond accordingly. So I feel like this just kind of shows both sides really well. And it's definitely, it's a lot, it's a lot of content. When it comes down to yeah, it, you look at it, it's 40, 40 <laughs> videos, a lot of content. Yeah, it's a lot. And sometimes you don't need that much. And that's fine, too. Um, but yeah, as we said at the top of the call, the comms and marketing leaders we're working with, they have so many different audiences that they're trying to address and so many different campaigns that they're working on at any given time. So, um, you know, you can always dial it up. You can dial it, dial it back. Um, but we do usually create a lot of content um, for that group. Totally. And these are we love all of our projects, but these ones are really fun because they're thinking about how can we repurpose. They're very thinking about yeah. the specific channels and things like that, that there's um, really using employee stories to the fullest, which is yeah, always a fun challenge used. for our team too. That's yeah. what, you know, that's what I really um, should have said at the beginning, which is like, what's the difference? <laughs> like we're trying the differences is like comms and marketing leaders will use everything at their disposal, everything that's good and engaging, they will use to the fullest. So there's no waste. Um, and, you know, see, seeing this plan as an example, it may, you know, again, there's there's some defined things and there's some undefined things, but it all works and it's all going to get used, trust me. <laughs> Over the <laughs> totally. Um, okay, I think we are at time.
Oh my gosh, got 30 seconds left. Okay, we really squeezed, really packed it in. Um, really which squeezed is, it in. Yeah, um, which yeah. is great. Okay, so I'll do a quick like 10, <laughs> yes, we'll do a quick like 10 second summary. So comms leaders, they take a broad approach, approach to employee storytelling. They prefer timely, flexible, ongoing content and that retainer kind of mindset of being planned and being able to react to the unplanned are three of the things that really distinguish that comms audience and that comms content creator. Um, you nailed it, Van Deesen. So you nailed can... it. Yeah, <laughs> that can be Sorry, that you just... <laughs> those are the two. Those are the two things. Yeah, that's good. Yes, bring it all back. Um, awesome. Okay, well, thanks everyone. I know we're ten seconds over time here, so thanks everyone for <laughs> joining us today. Please connect with Lauren and I on LinkedIn. Um, if you liked this session or sessions like this, we do this every other Thursday. Um, we have a great webinar on mental health awareness next week. I got to plug it. We'll link it in the yeah. comments. It's going to be really, really good it's with one really of um, with Kristen Irby of Train Technologies. It's going to be an awesome session. So um, anyway, we hope to see you back here soon and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thanks, Lauren. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you, Bernadette. Bye.